oh, y'all trying to paint me away, da, da, da. And I'm like, no, we just want the correct accounting. Oh, so, well, then audit me then. I and I'm like, audit you? I want like, audit Fam, me. that's nasty. I'm not taking my <laughs> niggas to court. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Like, that's just nasty. But, but again, looking back, everything makes sense now. Like, everything is starting to come together and, 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 and paint a picture. Because it's like, yo, why do you always get so hostile and so argumentative when we're trying to just get the business side right and focused and taken care of which isn't even a, a large part of the business honestly it's not There's so much more but to it's it. like <laughs> fam you got to remember again thing. we're profit partners we're a percentage based we have a percentage based contract an agreement where we get a percentage off of everything that's coming in for the pot so we have to see the money that's coming in how else will we know what the fuck we getting and then he had the nerve to say the last one of the last conversations we had, he tells me, oh, you got a calculator, right? Uh, yeah. And this is, this is, this for me, this That's is when, my story, but this ahead. is when for me, I was like, okay, I'm going to have to pull away from this in a minute because I don't even know who this nigga is anymore. And I don't know who this nigga think he talking to. And I'm fam, I'm not trying to, that energy to me is corny to even have that type of energy with, with niggas you call your friends. Like, I don't even want to have that type of energy on me, right? So when he started talking like that, and I told you this, I said, fam, I'm not even sure who this nigga is anymore. Because he's saying things, he's moving a certain way, he's wearing funny hats. <laughs> I don't know who this nigga is anymore. Don't do that. <laughs> I'm just being real. I've never seen a nigga wear a mirror hat in my life. <laughs> I wasn't mad at some of the hats, man. I'm just saying I've never seen a nigga wearing a Mary hat in my life. So that for me was telling. I was like, oh, mm. this nigga, he's transforming into somebody else. Yeah. So I'm just like, why is it an issue? But for me, it was like, you know, you, you, you're just talking to certain people and everybody telling you like, yo, listen, I did business with him. Watch that nigga, man. I'm like, I'm like, Joe ain't gonna do that to me. That's my yeah. nigga. He ain't doing that with me. It honestly, never, never even crossed my never mind. Never crossed period. my mind. But now when this becoming argumentative and niggas are saying this and saying that, every time accounting comes up, I'm like, I'm like, fam, why is it only an issue when accounting comes up? The same way he said, why is it only a problem when money get brought in? And again, <laughs> my thing is, it's not about the money. It just, it no, just became not. a point where the respect level just started to disappear. And you start talking to me like I work for you. And it's like, my nigga, I don't work for you. I don't work for you, bro. I don't know what you, what type of meetings you having and who's talking to you and who's breaking down what to you. I don't work for you, bro. Like, but this is something we built and pushed to get. I came on episode 77, but who gives a fuck? Before that, it wasn't, it, it wasn't no money here. Let's just be or, honest. Or, it wasn't, or, it, or it wasn't, it wasn't what it is now. And you, you never argued IP. I want to make that clear. Never. Rory never argued IP. Never I, I never IP. argued that. It was never about that. I'm like, fam, I'm, I, I want this to <laughs> be. It. I want this to be as simple and easy as possible. This should be the simplest bag, the simplest money we ever make. Because essentially, what are we doing? We sitting down as friends and we kicking it. Yeah. We don't have to complicate this thing. But then after a while, once bigger checks start to come in, and once we're touring and all of this, it's like you start to see niggas moving certain ways, and it's like, it's like, all right, fam. It's now it's just weird. Like, what the fuck is going on here? And for a while, my energy started to disappear because, like I said, I don't even know who I'm dealing with anymore at this point. Mm -hmm. And I know money changes niggas, and I understand that. No, no it doesn't. Money doesn't change anyway. Money, makes, money makes, magnifies makes, who makes, you are. Make, makes you more of what you are. It, it magnifies who you are. And I get it, bro. Like, I, I understand. And I, again, this is not an assassination character. I, sorry to cut you off. It's not an assassination character because I don't want to go on the same no, route I, that I, they went. I'm Joe not assassinating. Joe has done great things with money and great positive things because I do think there is a good part of him. But there's also this other part. Right. Absolutely. Which you're speaking to. Yeah. I'm, I, I think Joe has some amazing qualities. I think so too when he wants to. But I but I also I'm learning, I'm learning because, see, you gotta give shit time to, to fall the way it's gonna fall. Yeah, you gotta give time right? time. And yeah, and you gotta just watch people and you know, I heard Joe say, Oh yeah, me and Maul never we never broke down a bag or bust down bread together, whatever he said. And I'm like, my nigga, that's not true. Like, mm. but when you were still rapping and shit, I had you do verses for niggas that I know. I had you do videos with niggas that I know. Like, I, I had you through walkthroughs with promoters that I know, like, in different, like, in Connecticut and shit like that. Like, I had, I tried to, like, bring shit to the table, like, but again, I was never, it's never about money for me. 
It's all about you. You my man. Listen, if it's some bread out here to get, go get it. If I know some niggas that's trying to do a party and they oh, they want you to do a walkthrough and all that, yo, here, let me set it up for you. But now, you know, that that is bigger money coming in and all that, shit just got weird, bro. Like, shit just got very weird for me. And I'm not good with doing weird shit. I don't do weird shit. I don't like weird energy from niggas. Like, I remove my... Once I see niggas doing weird, funny shit... I just get away from that. Like, I don't even want to be around that type of shit. And now it's to a point where you saying things and, you know, you got other niggas in the room saying things and chiming in. And I'm like, yo, what's up with y'all niggas? Like, what the fuck is going on? So now I'm sitting here working. Now everything is it's starting to become real, really clear to me. Like shit is starting to really become clear to me. Like, oh, you niggas been having little conversations and, 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 and conspiring shit for a minute. You niggas been trying to like set shit, you know, playing shit with the chess piece and try to sh set shit up to look a certain way for a while now because now that the shit is out the bag, I'm starting to see everybody's true feelings on, 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 on certain things. And people right. is talking about business that they don't know nothing about. They, they talking about contracts that they don't know nothing about. And I'm just like, mm -hmm. fam, what the fuck is going on here, man? And then you saying shit, I, you, oh, I lived with you. You making it sound like, oh, nigga, I wasn't. When you met me, I had money in my pocket, nigga. I might have had more money in my pocket than you had if we keeping it at 100. I was always hustling. Always. Always doing shit I shouldn't have been doing that I didn't really want to do at, at a time allegedly. in my life. Allegedly. Allegedly. But I'm just saying, like, I was always a nigga that... If I had to go get it, I would go get it. Mm -hmm. So don't try to paint me like I'm some nigga that you found on the street and I was fucked up, I was homeless, and I was sleeping on your couch. I'm hiding detergent and all this shit. Like, what the fuck are you talking about? Let's talk about what you hiding. Because every time it's a talk about accounting, it's always some argumentative energy coming from you only, not from me, not from you. Never. I'm never arguing <laughs> about money, especially not with my niggas. I'm not doing that. But if every time we present some shit... About accounting And you want to start arguing to them, Well audit me then Fam I'm never taking my niggas to court And the first thing you say is If y'all try to start a podcast I'm suing the pants off of y'all Who are you my nigga? At that like, point who that did you, me Who did you just turn into? Everything that we stood for in this podcast All these years about You know corporate fucking over the creatives And this that Like I've seen Joe do fucked up shit in business And music to, to, to companies and labels But I don't care about that Because they owe us anyway So fuck them Mm-hmm. Never in a million years did I think you would be sitting somewhere talking crazy about me. Not a nigga like me. A nigga that ain't been nothing but stand up with you. My, as long as you know me, I, I never did no foul shit to Joe. Never. In fact, I've gotten Joe out of situations where it could have been bad for him. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like really bad for him. I, I can see you having a different lens I front that. lined that. Me. Mm -hmm. When that shit happened with consequence, my man popped on cons. No disrespect to cons. But that was my homie. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That was my homie that front line that. Mm -hmm. He caught, yo, nigga cons swung on me. Yo, niggas got to come down here. Say no more. But now you trying to play like I was some flunky nigga sleeping on a couch like you found me on some corner and gave a nigga a roof over you. Who you fuck you think you talking to, nigga? And I don't mean to present this type of energy, man, no, but that no, shit, no. niggas ain't going to assassinate Maul's character. My shit been A1. Any nigga that know me that had dinners with me, my, my shit is A1. So don't ever sit nowhere on no fucking platform and try to make it seem like you came and saved me from the streets or, or you scooped me up off a corner and I was in front of 7-Eleven stinking and shit. <laughs> we not doing that. We not doing that. That's not happening. I don't, I don't, and I don't like doing this shit. Maul's real cool. We, you know, I don't, even, I don't even put this type of energy out there. But when niggas try to defamate my character, I don't play with that. You could steal from me. You could take money from me. You could do whatever you want. But one thing you're not going to do is defamate my character and try to put me out here to the people like I'm some nut ass nigga. We not doing that. That's not that's not that. Fuck this podcast. Fuck this money. Fuck all of this shit. You're not going to defamate my character, my nigga. I've been too solid of a nigga, too solid of a nigga for you to ever sit somewhere and try to defamate my character. We not doing that. When you said that fuck shit you said to me at Park's crib, talking about you, this is none of your business. I knew what it was then. And I told you that, Rory. I said, mm -hmm. yo, Rory, it's over. And he was like, what you talking about? I said, fam, this nigga just told me that this podcast is none of my business. Look me in my eyes and said, it's none of my business. That for me said everything. You finally just said it, but you've been feeling like that, nigga. You've been moving like that. Which you just finally said it. Shit. We, 
we're naive and thinking friends. Because I'm thinking you my there's, man. There was, there was cues to it. <laughs> it's plenty of times we traveling, we touring. I'm like, yo, fam, how am I getting the same payout when we sell 1,500 seats and we sell 2,000 seats? You think I'm stupid? How am I still getting the same money for that? That don't even add up. It don't even make sense. But what we did, that's the homie. We'll fix it. We'll figure it out. Let's just keep it moving. Let's just keep growing the show. Cool. But enough is enough, fam. Like, I'm not the smartest nigga in the room, but I'm not the dumbest nigga either. Not the dumbest nigga. I'm humble. I'm forgiving. I'm, I'm laid back. I'm relaxed. I'm chill. I'm all of those things. I'm not stupid. I could play like I'm stupid. I could act like I'm stupid. But sooner or later, I'm going to pull you by your coat and say, yo, fam, let me holler at you real quick because I peeped game already. Mm. And I just want you to know that we're not doing that. And for me, that's all it was. And when he told you to miss a few episodes, when you sent me that text, I'm like, okay, this nigga trying to play the boss card. Well, no, he also said that he told me to take Tuesday and Friday off. I Again, we not. <laughs> that's, I don't want to get into the text. It's lies. It's just lies, fam. And, and if we like, and fuck never it, it's over. Me until we had to talk, and, right? It, and then said, "Yo, let's get in our respective corners for the next month." And then came back and with, said, "Yo, we abandoned the pod, even though it was some shit that you agreed upon." But listen, actually, all it was that, your idea, right? But all of that, <laughs> let's go to our corners. Cool, we agreed to it. But we can't go to our corners and then you pop up on a show that I I helped build and Rory helped build with some with, with two new niggas and no disrespect to them. No disrespect. I don't even want them to feel like it's negative energy towards them. No, it's none I, of that. No disrespect I, I to them. Ice Anish. I'm just saying. They, they good people. You tried to make it look away. What you tried to do was you tried to move us out, prove that you can keep the show going without us because all you really want to do is put two niggas on there that's going to take a salary because that was your thing with us when we started talking about accounting. Yo, when this deal is over, I'm putting y'all on a salary. What's the first thing we said? It's not happening. It's not happening. You're putting who on a salary? Mm-hmm. Salary? No, I, I remember the conversation. That's not happening. And this this was before the Spotify, or in between the Spotify deal. This is what about? I'm saying. I'm, salary, who, me? After we done put all these years in and no. all these, this sweat equity trying to build this shit? Salary, me? And on top of that, let me backtrack even more. We were talking about percentages. Three of us was in the parking uh, parking lot of Totowa. Yo, we should do this percentage, this percentage. Cool. And then we started talking about numbers on like some friend, fun shit, chilling. Like, yo, we could probably get this amount from this... Yo, I wouldn't give y'all that percentage off that deal, though. And we was like, Joe, that's not how percentages work. Right. I wouldn't give you that much money. Right. And you're naive. I'm thinking we just joking around type of shit. But no, you think you, you got to be friend, accountable in your shit. You thinking your friend would never do Being you naive. like that. I remember that conversation vividly when we brought up those percentages and then brought up a lump sum of what that would be. And he said, oh, I wouldn't give y'all that percentage off that lump sum. Like... Yeah. No, that's how a percentage work, Joe. See, but but see, you know what it is, man? And and it's 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 to me, and this is just my perspective. I feel like Joe feels like a lot of the success of this podcast is based off of his music career. Right? I feel like he thinks it's a trickle down effect from his music career to the podcast. And my thing is, it's not. I've been in some of these cities when you were a rapper, Joe. I've been in some of these cities. It wasn't this many people weren't showing up for you and see. And, and, and again, through all of this, I've had time to replay some shit in my head. And you know how a certain shit has start to like come together. And he said something at the Highline Ballroom show we did when we were in the dressing room. He had went outside. He had recorded the people wrapped around the corner and he came back and he said, yo, I got these niggas wrapped around the block. I got the I got the I got the line around the corner. And I looked at him and I said, Joe, you don't have the line around the corner. We have the line around the corner because you've done shows here before and you've never had the line around the corner. You've done shows in Philly and you've never had the line around the corner. You've done shows in Boston and you've never had the line around the corner. And that's fine. But it's like the ego, the greed. I, I, I get it. It just yeah. it just becomes too much, and it's like and, and to his right too on personality. Yes, he has grown a, a large part of his personality outside of rapping with a cool, huge fan base. Cool. Which is why which is why you, you get the percentage have, you, you get. Have, you, which is why he gets. Which the is why you get gets. the percentage you get. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm not I'm not nigga. I'm a regular nigga from uptown, bro. Yeah, this, I didn't come here whole, with no fan base. Like I get it. This whole I'm gonna take my value. low percentage and, and, and chill. But you're not gonna jerk me on my percentage that I took. <laughs> 
at this whole crazy value conversation that everyone's been debating about us and th- and this and that and yo they they don't do shit here they they do a bunch of shit over here this and that Mo and I have never said we're these crazy personalities ever never said it bro I've never b- bragged about what I do I like I'll gladly admit that I don't have cool. I don't I didn't have an audience. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was known in a couple circles. Am I like talking with my friends? That's it. There's, va- there's value amongst the three of us. Now, do I think Joe has crazy value by himself? Do I think you have crazy value by yourself? Do I think I have crazy value by myself? Yes. Whatever you think that value is, from a number standpoint, whatever. But the three of us together was some different type of value. And That's let's all. recognize that. Let's I'm just not, recognize nobody, that. I never walked in that pod and say, "Yo, I make this shit." Yeah, but it's, I, it, that 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 demeanor was never presented from this side ever. Like I'm, I'm not. You know, I see the, the the people online. They saying, "Oh, yeah, you know, Joe made y'all cool." If that's what you want to, but there's a reason he called me and asked me to join the pod, fam. And no disrespect to you, Rory, but when I came on, I feel like I made this shit more palatable. I agree. I feel like I made this shit more cool. I feel like I, I gave this shit I a different agree. energy. Like no disrespect to nobody. You my guy. You know I fuck with you. More but I just made no. I'm just saying. I feel like he knows that though. So okay. then say that, nigga. My, my, don't don't shit. let it don't let Charlemagne come on the show and have to say it. Why you don't say it? I, I remember when you had come on in the second episode, Joe and I were still in the talks of the girl thing, still at that point, because right. we wanna like, Yo, more let's just let's just be the guys bo- podcast. <laughs> more killing this shit. And but 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 see, and but the, my that's, only problem. But see, and I also don't take any people are just weirdos in that type of I don't take offense to that. No, if no, no, say, I'm not I'm not you did when you came on. I'm not taking offense to it. I'm just saying that. He don't speak up about that shit. He don't be like, nah, you bugging. Like, nah, my man, they they got value. They bring shit to this. Like, he let these narratives run and he play into them. Like, I mean, of course it's like, fam, like, I see all of that, but, but he know that I don't give a fuck about that. Like, he know that I'm just the type of dude like, nigga, I don't care about that, man. Like, nigga, we having fun. We busting it up. We making some money. We looked up one day. We had an audience. Cool. Yeah. But my thing is, like, we got to... Put your ego and put your put your ego to the side, homie. Put your ego to the side. Like it's not that you, you it's not that serious. Like what you doing right now, what you did to your niggas, the way he up there talking about me, the way he up there talking about that's corny. Like that's corny shit to me, fam. I, I like you saying few things that really offend me. Him saying Rory's measly ass and that I was trying to manipulate shit. Let's let's be transparent. And tell the truth, more. Because I'm the only one that was talking to him and was talking to you. Right. I was trying to save this fucking podcast like you would not fucking believe. Mm-hmm. With two people that were done with it. Mm-hmm. Joe was done with the shit. You were done with the shit. And mm-hmm. I'm the only one sitting here trying to keep this shit going. So when Joe brings up these words like measly, yo, you lost your leverage. Leverage on what? What is this narrative talking about leverage? I didn't go into some, any type of thing to have leverage. Again, that's I'm just... trying to save our fucking podcast. And these are the terms that need to happen, which is terms we agreed upon two years ago. I'm not looking for leverage. Right. If I was looking for leverage, that would come in renegotiation. Right. I'm not as fucking stupid as you think. Right. Stop with these narratives to, to dumb people that just think you smart. There was no, well, I wasn't looking for leverage on anything. I was trying to save this podcast mm-hmm. and I talked with my mans and I talked with you and I put together a list of what would happen on top of the things I needed as well. You said you was going to meet them, said, oh wait, that's all y'all need? R- right. And then didn't meet them. Right. And then you was wondering why this didn't happen. Right. So some, I'm the one manipulating shit. You right. came to me and said I could easily make this shit happen. Came back, nothing happened. Right. And, I, and, and another thing that I've seen people say, oh, you, you riding with Rory. I'm riding with what's right. I, did anyone ever think you was doing what was best for you and I was doing what was best for me. And we wasn't even riding for each other. Right. <laughs> and and that, but see, again, that's, but that's why this is important because I, like I said, I didn't even want to do this. You didn't want to do this, but no, we, we came to something we was like, it's absolutely necessary because these narratives have to stop. We got to put it into this because this is not what happened. This is not the truth. And again, I give you a whole bunch of credit because when he told you to stay home, the first thing I told you was, I said, Rory, I'm not recording without you. I remember. I'm not doing that. I said, because to me, that's nasty. It's basically saying like, you know, we go to the club, the bouncer say, your man can't get in. He ain't got the right shoes on. And then we continue to go in the club. That's corny. I'm never doing that. Fuck it. We all leaving. So when he said he told you to stay home. Nah, we're not doing that. Go to the studio. Joe, let me holler at you. And we have the talk we have. And then that turns into something else. It's like, Joe, why is it always a problem when people are having a conversation about this show 
and you're not around. Like, do you feel like niggas is trying to conspire some shit behind your back? Because that's not what it is, bro. Niggas are having creative talks on how to make this shit better, how to grow this shit, productive conversations. I said, but you being real defensive when you're not around and people are talking about the show, it's saying something. Same way six years ago when Elliot and I just went to lunch. Especially when you have a whole bunch of conversations about this podcast and we're not around and then we continue to be like, okay, let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. All right, cool. And again, we might have to take some onus in that because we probably let that go on for on, on, on we probably let that go on for too long. So cool, we'll take some onus on that. But then we had that talk, and I'm just seeing him. I'm just like, oh, I, he thinks that he's really this this new guy because I'm hearing it, and then the way he's talking to me, and I'm just like, I think y'all got things twisted. No, I don't, we don't got nothing twisted. I think that money started to come in. You started to see more money than you ever seen in your life. You started to have conversations with niggas you wanted to have conversations with as a, as a rapper that would never talk to you. So I think that you starting to feel like this new person and you got this new leash on life, which is fine. I'm not love, even mad at that, but don't don't bring that love, energy love that for my people. Keep that Just, energy <laughs> with some groupie bitches. Keep that energy with some fans. Don't bring that energy to your niggas, though. You can have an ego with women and fans and all of that. Don't have no ego with your niggas that built something with you that was in the trenches with you like I was. A nigga that a nigga that done been locked up with you like I was. And if you remember the conversation the three of us had that would we thought was productive, he said, Yes, I like my ego. My ego is important in certain places. I should channel it better, but I should never channel it the way I channeled it with my friends. This is his words, not mine. But then what happened now? Like That's that went I'm out saying. the window? Because we had a five-hour conversation at his house. We thought we made some progress. And, 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 and be clear, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I got to give my guy Rory props on this too. I was done with the pod after that no. <laughs> conversation we had. I was done. That's why that measly word and that like you ain't gonna never look me in my eyes bothered me so fucking much. I'm like, fam, I was the one trying to keep this shit together. I'm going to give you that credit because I told you, I said, Rory, I would never sit down with him again. I said, because I can't fake it. That energy, that chemistry, that laugh and shit, the fun, it's not there no more. When you look me in my eyes and tell me after all these years, all this grinding, all this building and pushing that we did, you tell me that this shit is none of my business. I can never unhear that, fam. I can never unhear you say that to me. And, and granted, maybe there's a, a bunch of adjectives for me, for me trying to force this podcast to keep going. It's not measly. It's not liar. It's not manipulator. No. No, and, and, Listen, and, and I'll have your back I, on that. It was never that I, with did you. Did I force something? Maybe. Did I, did I try too hard to make sure the shit no, went? Because no. I really thought we could get no. back to it. No, Maybe. no. You know what you did? You did what you were supposed to do as a friend. Like, yo, fam, let's just make this shit right. Let's just make this shit right. Like, fuck it, man. We built something dope. Let's just, this is just a bump in the road. Let's patch this shit up. Let's keep it moving. Yeah. But I'm going to be honest. Like I told you, I said, fam, I'm done. I had a two, I had a three hour FaceTime with Royce and we talked about everything. And he, I, te he, I text Royce afterwards after you called me and I thanked Royce. He talked, he <laughs> talked to me about a whole love, bunch love of slaughterhouse Royce, shit. You. He talked to me about a whole bunch of, you know, and it was like, but I'm telling Royce, I'm like, fam, just in the way I'm again, he had to pull up with Crook. Never, yeah. never put it out. I, I watched it. Never put it out. But it's a great pull up. He said something in that pull up. That when I saw it, it stuck with me. And when the shit fell apart with us, that shit played in my head. And him and Crook were talking about, Crook said something to the extent of, but bro, we have a contract with them. We got to honor our contract. We signed this. We agreed to this. We got to honor that. And his, Joe's response was, I don't give a fuck about no contract. I don't honor no contracts. And Crook just laughed like, all right, well, if that's how you feel, what are we even talking about? Like, I can't, it's no talking to you. Mm -hmm. And when he said that, I'm like, you don't honor no contracts. Well, and here we are today. Well, also, let's let's get into some of that conversation that we had where Joe was saying, because I, I, I want to make this as fair as possible. And I don't like to speak for people unless I speak for this them This is correctly. all the truth. No, I know. I, that's why I could sit here Joe, comfortably. Joe said, Joe what said, color is this? Is this like a, a, a what's this, a future. pistachio? Let's call it pistachio. I'm sitting here in my pistachio. I'm, I'm in my teal pistachio. My karma is beautiful. My aura Joe, is, I'm, I'm, I'm great, man. Joe said he didn't even honor our contract and overpaid us because he said he looked at our contract and saw what that money would have been off our percentage base and said, ugh, I don't like it. 
I want this to be the last time we talk about this, so I'm even going to put in his good points that he said. Right. <laughs> Which, again, I'm not sitting here saying I didn't believe my mans when he said that. Right. <laughs> right. I did. Okay, cool. Yeah. And thank, I said, thank you. I said, yo, thank you. Yeah. That's fire. That's right. some real solid, right. real man shit to do. Right. But when we go back to the points of when we get our respected corners, let's figure out what makes this work for our friendship and the business side. Mm -hmm. Accounting got brought back into play from when it stopped with the pandemic. Mm -hmm. And everyone made it clear, I don't care how far you dance around it, just throwing numbers in an Excel spreadsheet is not accounting. Not accounting. So yes, did I get accounting that said I was overpaid? Did I get accounting that said Joe is the greatest guy on earth? Of course. Mm -hmm. I did. And even then, did not say he was wrong. I said, just, you know, just give me the regular accounting. Like, right. you taking a whole month and, and getting mad at me and resenting me because you've been overpaying me but didn't tell anyone. And you now have the accountants working on this instead of something else. And they're offended and this and that. Well, let's, let, let me be clear. I don't think we were overpaid. I'm still you don't, you I'm don't still sit, on the you don't side sit, of you don't sit on I don't that, know anything. You don't no. <laughs> That's for been sure. my issue the but whole I'm time. Just, I'm just going with I'm just going with the optic. You don't sit you don't sit on the set and talk about me and talk about you the way he did. And then underneath all of that, you're you're overpaying somebody. You, it, right. don't add, it don't it don't right. add let's, up. Let's let's say I'm overpaid. It don't add up. Let's I'm say sorry. I'm overpaid. That don't that energy don't even match. Let's let's you don't dead, overpay people that you feel like that about and that you end up talking about like that publicly. You don't do that. Let's let's dead the narrative right now of this was about money that we said it was not about money and then joe came on to that podcast and said this is about money rory's asking about money let's dead that now spotify deal is about to end even before we even went into negotiations joe had said to me on some friend shit we was at lunch he said i already don't think this is going to be a good situation for us i said bet i've been saving my money fuck spotify if they come back with a crazy amount of number but it don't make sense for us fuck it i don't mm -hmm. care Mm -hmm. I'm gonna save my money. I don't splurge like that. I'm mm -hmm. chilling. Mm -hmm. And at this point, I think it was six or seven months before our deal even ended. So I was like, let's just get back. Nobody go crazy with their bread. And if we gotta go independent, we gotta go independent. That's great. Whatever. That's just probably a cool scenario. You don't have to worry about me at all. Mm -hmm. Don't ever make a decision. And I've I said this to him a thousand times during that Spotify deal. That's why this also offends me off his shit. I said, don't ever think you have to worry about me with money. Mm -hmm. Don't ever make a decision about me mm -hmm. that has to do with making sure I'm paid. Right. I love you for that, but don't ever do it. Mm -hmm. Cash app deal comes around. Pardon, his cash app deal for his pull-ups, according to him. Mm -hmm. We leave Spotify. He starts bringing in cash app to our podcast. Amazing. Love that. Cool. I get an email from... The accounting company CC'd with Ian on what a payment is going to be per month. This is the cash app deal. Yep. Naturally, as I always, always do, and as I told Joe, since the day we started doing business together, I don't care if it's $10 or $10 billion, I'm going to ask, so what is it? Mm -hmm. Cash app deal was great. It was around the exact same money, if not a couple hundred dollars more than what we were doing with Spotify per month. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Love you for getting that. My due. Mm -hmm. Just ask, so what is this? Right. Simple, simple question. Mm -hmm. Left it alone. Didn't even really get an answer. Didn't particularly care. Right. Everything's cool. We in a pandemic. We don't have a deal. You out there getting us money. My God. Fuck with you. Don't right. care. Whatever. This is about the show. Respect. Love you. Respect. Patreon deal comes around. I don't know a single fucking thing about it. I find out on the air with no. the rest of y'all. No, I saw we, all y'all jokes. We they, don't know they, a thing about they it. They were correct. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. Had <laughs> Let's no be idea. transparent. Got on there. All right. You're the head of creator equity cool but prior to that we were talking about starting a patreon page with our shit right which by the way is not you don't have to have a deal with patreon to start a patreon page right. so when we have conversations prior to this i'm not thinking okay this is a joe deal and i also asked i said i even asked his manager is this a joe button network deal like is this gonna have see the All thing the other is, shows right can't, like just because right. and not even on some crazy shit just on well let me just try to figure out what this is so I can know how to move mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. I'm not here to disrupt things. I'm mm -hmm. just asking what the fuck is going on. Right. He gets on there. We congratulate him for his, his position. Still love you, Joe, for getting that position. That's amazing. Patreon's great. I get a call from Ian. Hey, the accountant's going to reach out to you. This is going to be the monthly fee for Patreon. Yep. Was the number crazy per month? 
Absolutely. Good, great money. It's a lot of fucking money. Great money. A lot of fucking money. Mm-hmm. When I see a lot of money, do I automatically think, oh, there must be more? No. I no. just ask, so what is this based off of? Because from my understanding, at this point, this was a, a Joe Budden podcast thing. Mm-hmm. What his manager said. This, him and his manager, Ian, shout Ian. Um, again, I'm not here to, to assassinate anyone's character. I say to Ian, yo, I've been stacking my bread. I'm fine. People look overworked and we're doing a lot of shit right now. Mm-hmm. Like, I can just tell the morale is, I can just see it, that people are just overworked. No, 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 Patreon it wasn't being, seeing it. They, they expressed it to us. I'm, it's not my place to say, even no, though they said it. it's my place to say No, no, even it's though they said their place about it. me, I still don't return the favor when people do shit to me. I'm saying it. People expressed that they were overworked and underpaid. So, I say to Ian, and Ian and Joe, I don't care what narratives you spin, anything, whatever. I said to Ian, don't pay me this month or next. Don't, don't give me 